My name is Randy Butler and I'm with the Gilman Scholarship Program and welcome to today's Career Advancement Symposium titled The Power of Networking and Connection. With the Gilman Scholarship Program, Gilman Scholars have the opportunity to build and expand their professional networks through study and intern abroad programs as well as numerous opportunities available to them as alumni. And today we'll be hearing from three alumni of the Gilman Scholarship Program on how connections they made and skills gained abroad helped them in their careers. The Benjamin A. Gilman Scholarship Program is a program of the U.S. Department of State with funding provided by the U.S. government and has been administered by the Institute of International Education since the program's inception in 2001. So as I said, in today's presentation, we'll be hearing from three Gilman alumni. First, Lamar Shambly, who was a Gilman Scholar to Spain in 2009, will share how his experience influenced him and helped him on the path to launching Teens of Color Abroad, a study abroad program for high schoolers. Then, Manessa Lormjust will speak about her experience as a Gilman Scholar to France in 2015. She now works as a co cosmetic chemist at L'Oreal USA, thanks to the experiences she had in France, and she'll be speaking about how those initial connections and experiences abroad helped her on her journey. And finally, we'll hear from Pranav Savnur, who was a Gilman Scholar to the United Kingdom earlier this year, and he recently began working as a Real Change Fellow in Washington, D.C. Before we hear from our alumni presenters, I'll be sharing some information on the Gilman Scholarship Program. If you have any questions during the webinar, please type them into the question box. The Gilman Scholarship is sponsored by the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs, or ECA, in the U.S. Department of State. ECA leads a wide range of academic, professional, and cultural exchanges that include approximately 40,000 participants annually with the goal of increasing mutual understanding and respect between the people of the United States and the people of other countries. The Gilman Scholarship is just one of the many programs sponsored by ECA, and Gilman Scholars become part of a network of approximately 40,000 people who participate in ECA programs every year. The Gilman Scholarship is a program within the Bureau's Office of U.S. Study Abroad, the U.S. Study Abroad Office is committed to shaping and sustaining a more peaceful, prosperous, and just world by increasing and diversifying participation in study abroad. The Gilman Program awards approximately 3,000 scholarships every academic year and will have more than 3,500 scholarships for the upcoming year. Recipients can receive up to $5,000 to use towards program costs and related expenses such as tuition and fees, room and board, books, local transportation, health insurance, international airfare, passport and visa costs, and more. Award amounts will vary depending on student need and the selection process. Students can apply the scholarship toward a fall, spring, summer, winter, or academic year term program. And the Gilman program is often asked by students, what are the chances of receiving a scholarship? And we say generally one in four students are awarded a scholarship. If selected for a Gilman Scholarship, recipients will utilize the password-protected and secure Gilman Recipient Portal to input all fund distribution information, and recipients of the Gilman Scholarship will never be contacted by phone or email to provide personal bank information. The Gilman Scholarship provides many opportunities for building and expanding your network. For Gilman alumni, the program offers professional development and networking engagements, such as our U.S. Future Leaders Career Seminars and Topical Seminars, an alumni ambassador program, and much more. However, the most important experience comes before you even become an alumni, and that is the study or intern abroad experience that every Gilman Scholar has abroad. During every Gilman Scholar's study or intern abroad experience, they gain valuable knowledge, skills, and connections that can translate or be leveraged for other internship opportunities, graduate school programs, careers, and more. That's why today we're excited to have three Gilman alumni joining us to share how the knowledge, skills, and connections they gained abroad have helped them in their career path. Now, I'm excited to announce our three alumni presenters. Once again, they are Lamar Shambly, Vanessa Lormjust, and Pranav Savnur. If you have questions for our alumni presenters at any time, please make sure to type those into the question box, and we'll get to them during the question and answer session that's at the end of this presentation. So first, I'd like to introduce Lamar Shambly, who studied abroad in Spain in 2009. Hi, Lamar, and welcome. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, like like was said, my name is Lamar Shambly, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be able to share my experiences as a 2009 Gilman International Scholarship recipient uh, for my spring 2009 semester in Seville, Spain. Um, 
I was a modern languages and literature major at the College of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia, uh, where I was extremely lucky uh, to be able to study abroad my junior year in spring 2009, where I studied at the Universidad Pablo de Olavide in Seville, Spain. Now at Pablo de Olavide, uh, I took translation courses, a course on the history of slavery in Colombia, a course on the history of Seville, and so much more. Um, I wasn't entirely sure what to expect from uh, from the Universidad Pablo de Olavide, but I found it to be incredibly um, welcoming to uh, their international students. And also in my study abroad experience, I was lucky enough to be able to intern uh, for an organization called Movimiento por la Paz. And Movimiento por la Paz is a Spain-based nonprofit aimed at supporting human rights, democracy, solidarity, and equality between all people. And specifically for Movimiento por la Paz, I had a focus in education. Uh, for every summer in college, I was a teacher. And so I knew that I wanted to go into education. And so I was very thankful to be able to intern at Movimiento por la Paz because every week I got to tutor a young student in English. And for our one-on-one -on -one conversations, it was an incredibly low anxiety situation where we were both comfortable uh, practicing our language skills. I worked with a young girl, she was about eight years old. And so I'd occasionally say words with the uh, wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable and she'd laugh hysterically. And it was one of the highlights of, of my week, every week that I was um, that I was in Spain, especially thinking about uh, Gilman's purpose. Um, I found that this was perfect for cross-cultural understanding where I got to bond with uh, with another person from a very different living situation than me. Um, also, while I was abroad, I got to live with the homestay family for five months. And this was before the magic of, of, um, of cell phones with, with access to the internet. So I had to print out directions on how I would get from the airport to my homestay family. So as someone who had only been out of the country once before my experience in Spain, I was so nervous and not sure what to expect. Um, and I am incredibly happy to say that if I could do my whole experience over again, I absolutely would do um, a homestay living situation. Um, again, thinking about what Gilman's focus is in, this was a perfect moment for cross-cultural understanding and a chance for me to really improve my Spanish. Where I had conversations with my homestay family about American life back in the States, they were originally from Argentina, so they shared with me uh, what life was like back in Argentina here uh, in Seville. And then they would invite all of us to their family dinners. So essentially, I felt as if I was a part of their family. And one of the amazing things about studying abroad in Spain, and, and I would say for most of Europe, was that it was fairly easy to travel to other countries. And so I was able to travel to Morocco, uh, the UK, I traveled around London, uh, around the Netherlands, and Milan and Rome and Italy. And so one of the incredible things um, that, I, that I think that I was able to leverage while studying abroad is meeting the locals. Uh, one of the best decisions I made was to go to the conversation hours at Universidad Pablo de Olavide, where they would connect Erasmus students, their study abroad students, with local uh, Spaniard students. Yes. It was incredibly awkward at the beginning. Uh, we all wanted to talk with each other, but there were language barriers that people were afraid of. Um, but once we pushed past those barriers, it was an incredibly enlightening experience. Uh, as you can see in that in the photo on the on the presentation, I was lucky enough to to be able to make local Sevillano friends and other international students that were studying in Seville. Uh, and they invited me to local barbecues and celebrations. And uh, when it was my time to go back to the States, they even threw a going away party for me. Uh, and so even 10 years later, after my study abroad experience, we're in a group chat together. So I get to keep in touch with them on a regular basis. And now that we've moved on and some people are, are getting married and having children, it's an incredible um, bond that we've been able to foster over the past 10 years even to a point where um, one of my friends who's from France now lives and works in New York City, uh, and she has now become a part of my New York City family. 
Um, the second thing is language is key. Learning another language is not easy at all. Uh, I'm really grateful that I went to those conversation hours and made friends because I, I wasn't afraid to make mistakes on, on my Spanish and also ask for clarification uh, with, with some words and phrases that I didn't understand. I found that many local students were excited that I was actively speaking their language and that made it just so much easier uh, to form human connections. Uh, the third thing is uh, the importance of being a cultural ambassador. Uh, for me, there was an extreme pride in traveling as a young Black American. I felt like I could travel and live in my full self, which was a stark contrast to a lot of the stereotypes often purported about Black Americans. And I could also share my experience. Um, I'm a kid from a single parent household. Uh, from uh, government housing projects in Bedside, Brooklyn. My life, the barriers I had to hurdle in order to study abroad, my life experience, all was incredibly valuable and worth sharing. And so I found that in my study abroad experience, there was a lot of basic human connection um, that was real. And then the last bullet point that I um, put on the presentation was research your home country. Uh, I think it's really important to, to research what are some issues happening in the local area and find one that resonates with you and research it. And for me, in my case, it was music. I've always been a huge fan of music. And so before studying abroad in Spain, I did research on uh, local Spanish rappers and I was able to listen to some of their music and even learn some of the lyrics so then when I started meeting local Sevillanos, they were amazed that I knew some of their local favorite artists. Um, they had focused so much on American musicians that it was refreshing for them to have an American student in their home and, and research their music. And so after graduating from William & Mary in 2010, I moved to New York City to become a teacher for seven years. And the last two years of my teaching experience, I was a high school Spanish teacher where I had the immense privilege uh, to return to my community and encourage students who look like me, who came from my same background, to jump on the path of language learning in the same way that I did when I was in high school. Um, and so, of course, I often reflected about my amazing five-month experience in Seville and also talking a lot about the Gilman International Scholarship Program and letting them know that this was a resource available to them when they went to college. And so my students and I would often have conversations about language and traveling and studying abroad. And my students believed that 50 minutes of Spanish class was not enough to master the language. And they wanted the same study abroad experience that I had in college. And so with their blessing, they inspired me to leave teaching and to start a nonprofit called Teens of Color Abroad. Uh, we provide high school students of color with language immersion study abroad programs. Our aim is to expose high school students of color to global languages and cultures in order to enhance their language learning experiences, augment their educational outcomes, and increase their global competency skills. And so though the love of languages has always been a part of me, I would say it's because of my experience as a Gilman alum that's pushed me to begin this venture and plant the seed of travel even earlier for students so that when they go to college, they know which resources to look for. Um, and that's like my biggest piece of advice for Gilman alumni is just to lean in. Whether you're in education or finance, continue to reflect on your experiences abroad and find a way to bridge those ideas into what you do on a daily basis. Thank you so much, Lamar. Um, if you have questions for Lamar, please make sure to type those into the chat box um, and we'll get to them at the end. If you have questions um, for him about his journey into creating Teens of Color or teaching or his experience in Spain, please make sure to ask those. But now I'd like to welcome Manessa Lormjes, who is uh, also on the line. Let me see if I can advance to her slide. And she is uh, actually a current alumni ambassador, and she studied in France in 2015. So now I'd like to welcome her. Hi, Manessa. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Randy. Thank you for having me, and thank you, everyone else, for joining today. Um, the study abroad experience I had is something I literally talk about once a week because it has been so impactful on my life. So I'm really happy to share that with you guys. Um, for context, I studied abroad in France in 2015 over the summer. 
because in undergrad, I studied chemistry and due to kind of like the rigorous schedule that I had, I couldn't afford to take a whole semester away to study abroad. But my home school, Rutgers University, actually offers um, a study abroad program where the French department goes to Paris with you. So contrary to some other experiences, I didn't actually have to go to a different university. My university's professors went with us to Paris, had um, a classroom set up, organized host families uh, for us to live with, and were really hands-on with that experience. Um, while I was in France, I studied French literature and conversation. So um, in the morning, I would, you know, read text, uh, take a lunch break, and then um, regroup for the conversational course in the afternoon. And I think it's in the conversation course that you really get a good grasp of the culture. A lot of the things that we discuss just pertain to our experiences in Paris um, during our time there. So what it was like on the subway or what musée did we go to that week or just really trying to understand what it is that we were experiencing while definitely improving our language skills. Um, and every week on Wednesdays, you would have a cultural excursion activity. So again, because our professors were very hands-on, they would organize um, a cultural event every single Wednesday. So either we were going to a museum, we were going to a monument, we were getting um, an exclusive tour. They really tried to fully immerse us into French culture, leveraging the connections that they already had because a lot of my professors um, were actually from France. And just overall, I think I definitely improved my French language skills. Um, and I, I think a lot of times people don't necessarily study abroad and take a language, but I think in doing so, it helped me later on in my career, which I'll discuss um, in a bit. One of the impacts that study abroad had on me in general is definitely I was able to establish lifelong friendships. So the two girls, aside from me that you see in that picture, are my friends Daisy and Lily. And my friend Daisy in the center actually got married three weeks ago, and Lily and I were both her bridesmaids. And we still keep in close contact with each other. We're always reminiscing about our experience abroad. It really was something that brought us together. Um, and while I had class with one of them previously, um, Daisy I actually met in Paris. So even though we went to the same school, we weren't friends before our trip. And just that experience brought us a lot closer. Um, I also made um, really close ties with the Rutgers French department now. They actually asked me to come back and speak to the student because they like how vocal I am about my experience. And, um, you know, they just want to show what can really happen when you, you know, you take your language um, learning seriously. What I was also able to do is after my study abroad experience, I went to the career fair at my university and I explained that, well, I didn't necessarily have the technical experience uh, because I hadn't done any research in the lab yet. I just completed an international um, study abroad experience and what kind of like insights I saw from the French beauty market compared to what I saw in the US and the recruiter was actually very thrilled and excited that I was I was kind of putting myself out there to share those experiences and she highly recommended me for an internship at L'Oreal and now I work as a full-time cosmetic chemist so I literally attribute my experience studying abroad um, definitely through the support of the Gilman program to how I was able to leverage an internship and now um, a full-time career. And I think overall, the experience just helped me really identify not only that I love Paris and French culture, but I love to travel. Um, as of today, I've actually been to 17 countries, um, some throughout Europe, some in North America. Even earlier this year, I went to Iceland. And uh, this, this past summer, I actually went to Thailand, but it was really taking that first trip to really put myself out there, seeing what else is out there in terms of um, culture and just experiences that really kind of lit a travel bug inside of me. So that's actually me a few weeks ago. <laughs> we actually did, um, one thing that L'Oreal does is they like to showcase their talent. So we actually had a photographer come to the lab and take pictures and stuff. And um, they actually put that on their social media pages. But for those of you that don't know, L'Oreal is a, it's a global French cosmetics company. So while I work right now in formulating hair color products, um, we have skincare, makeup, um, hair care, fragrances. 
we're a very international and global company where the opportunity um, is always there for me to expand my career internationally because we have a hub in the US, we have hubs in France, we have a hub in Japan. So there's even within L'Oreal other ways in which I could expand my travel experience. Um, and another thing I actually realized I didn't write it in here, but earlier this year, I was a co-author um, with a larger group of women of color showcasing our experiences traveling abroad. So that was also interesting because it was in partnership with the nonprofit in New York. It's called um, She's Ready. And so they are an organization that helps students get their first passport and kind of start that um, interest inside of them because a lot of times if you're not exposed to travel or if someone in your family is not traveling, it's really hard to envision that for yourself. Um, and overall career advice that I have is to be authentic in your attempts to network. Um, I know sometimes it's a little awkward or uncomfortable, but people love when you are your authentic self. And if there's any way that you can offer something in return to the person you're networking with, whether it's sharing an article or putting them in contact with someone else, you asking to network with them or asking them to put you in contact with who they have a larger network with is a good way to see if you can reciprocate something on your end as well. So that's it for me. Thank you, Manessa, for sharing your story with us. Uh, if you have any questions for Manessa or for Lamar, please make sure that you type them into the question box and we'll get to them um, at the question and answer portion, um, which is in just a few minutes. But first and last, I'd like to introduce uh, Pranav Savanur, who studied in England actually earlier this year um, in the spring semester. And he recently moved to Washington, D.C. to work as a real fellow. So hi, Pranav, and welcome. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. I'm extremely grateful and delighted to be here. Um, so starting off, uh, just to give a background, I'm a junior uh, studying biology and anthropology pre-med at Kansas State University in Manhattan, Kansas. And when I studied abroad, I studied abroad at the University of Liverpool in England. I actually studied health and life sciences. So uh, they don't have a department called Department of Biology or Department of Public Health. So they just have this holistic uh, department called health and life sciences where they have kinesiology, they have pre-med, pre-OT, pre-dental, everything going around. And they actually don't have a concept called pre-med or pre-health careers. Um, once they finish their 12th grade, they directly move to med school or dental school or law school or whichever they want to do. So when I was trying to explain what pre-med actually was, it was journey and many people did not understand what I meant. So um, it was actually really helpful in one sense to study in the health and life science department because who were, whoever uh, were taking classes in this particular department wanted to go to grad school or wanted to do research and nobody else were planning on doing a bachelor's in this and then go to med school. So I thought that was very unique. And uh, I actually, um, when I came back to the US, I felt that I appreciate this system more because if I just finished my 12th grade and I had to go to med school, I don't think I would be as passionate uh, as passionate I am right now to do medicine or like pursue medicine as my career. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, while I was there, I got a network. Uh, I actually reached out to three professors at uh, the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. Uh, it's called LSTM in short. It's actually the world's oldest tropical medical center and actually ranked second in the whole world for the research. So it was a very old uh, research center with all the modern uh, amenities you can imagine. And it's actually supported by uh, the Gates Foundation, which is Bill and Melinda Gates and the World Health Organization sponsors it. So it was a very big shot. Uh, school for me to uh, target on. And I never thought I would get a chance to, when I was studying abroad, I was only 19. I'm still 19, I'm turning 20 tomorrow. So when I was 19, um, I was like, okay, I am not really sure if I have all the technical skills to research at such a prestigious university or uh, work at such a prestigious lab, which has 
world recognition. So I was like, I'm not going to think about that. I'm just going to focus on writing an email. I just wrote a long email regarding what are my interests and why you want to work in your specific lab. And I sent it out to three different professors. And interestingly, by the next day, I had a response from all the three professors uh, who were willing to set up an appointment with me. So I did that and I actually was finally mentored by the department head of global public health, which we call as global medicine here in the US. So I was actually mentored uh, by the department head of that division. And I got to work uh, with a doctor who actually has seven degrees in healthcare, uh, PhDs, uh, masters and like certifications, and of course an MD degree. So that was awesome. And I got to learn a lot of, in, I got um, I got to actually sit down with him in his office and write a lot of grants and see how he communicates with the World Health Organization, UK aid. And interestingly, he was also communicating with his partners back in the US through UNICEF USA, US aid, and um, actually a lot of senators uh, in the US as well. So I thought that was very interesting on how the US and the UK kind of work together. So yeah, that was about my experience uh, when I was researching at LSTM. Um, one thing I would recommend when you're studying abroad is look out for all emails you get from Gilman. Uh, uh, Randy, I'm still on the previous slide. Sorry. <laughs> uh, one thing uh, I would say is look out for any email you would get from uh, the Gilman Scholarship Foundation or the Gilman Scholarship Organization. So uh, they sent out an email. They said they're going to do this leadership summit for the first time, and it's going to be held in Greece and Portugal. So I thought that was an awesome experience, and the dates perfectly fit. Uh, the dates uh, perfectly fitted well in my uh, Easter break, which is their spring break. So I did the I attended the Greece leadership summit, and there were 28 other Gilman scholars who were studying all over the UK and all over Europe actually there in Greece everybody was studying something else um, so it was a re it was a very insightful conference or summit is what I would like to say we got to hear from uh, one of the local leader in Thessaloniki in Greece uh, we got to talk about media advocacy and we have also actually met the American ambassador who's stationed in Greece so that was like my fan girl kind of moment and I also got to make a lot of travel videos um, back here at K-State, um, I had an opportunity to take an ethnography class, which taught me how to make videos. So I actually got to uh, practically uh, implement that in my life and actually make travel videos, which I'll be talking about more uh, in the next slide. Uh, the biggest thing for me for studying abroad is what I also wrote during my Gilman application is I wanted to work with this doctor. I wanted to reach out with this person. So uh, the most important connection I made was with the doctor I worked with at LSTM. So uh, I actually still um, research under him, even though I'm back in the US. We speak over Skype or Facebook Messenger once or twice a week, and he gives me assignments and gives me a background information on that. And I do my own research on the database I'm provided with. So I'm really grateful for those opportunities that I'm actually getting to work uh, work on a postdoc level as being as an undergrad and also focus on my classes to graduate and also focus on my internship or fellowship, which I'm doing right now. And the second was the global health department head at LSTM. So after everything I've worked, uh, after uh, I finished working uh, with the doctor, I had a final meeting with the department head and he actually offered me a graduate school letter to come and study at LSTM full time after I graduate from uh, Kansas State. So I already have an acceptance letter to get into doing a master's in global health, emphasis in maternal and child care in Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, which I was not expecting. And I was totally overwhelmed and I did not know how to react. So that was uh, the second biggest thing, a second biggest thing which happened. And third, I actually also got to meet other Marshall and Gates Cambridge scholars from the US who are studying at LSTM and other universities. Uh, 
So Marshall and Gates Cambridge scholarship, uh, scholarships are a nationally competitive scholarships for grad school. And um, it's actually, um, I think Marshall is fu uh, funded by the Marshall Foundation and they select up to 30 students in the US every year to represent the US and uh, strengthen the US UK ties. So I felt that getting an opportunity to meet a Marshall Scholar and a Gates Cambridge Scholar. Um, I actually knew the Gates Cambridge Scholar uh, from back at K-State, but I never actually met him in person. So I just reached out to him by email and then uh, he was like, sure, we should meet up. And he actually told me that before meeting me, he had dinner with Bill Gates and they spoke about health equity. So I was like, wow, there are so many opportunities out there. And if we do not study abroad, we're in this narrow, uh, we're in this narrow tunnel, and we focus on one thing. But we tend to, but we tend to uh, darken out or blind out what's actually outside that tunnel. So that was actually one of the biggest immersive experience I had. And my fourth biggest connection was the American ambassador station in Greece. Uh, as a pre-med student, what you would think is, okay, I'm going to go to med school and go through residency and be a doctor in a private hospital but actually you can also be a doctor um, and get to travel with the u.s department so i was like wow that's amazing i can also pursue my passion of traveling and I'll, i can also um practice medicine and i never thought of that before talking to him and i occasionally still talk to him so i feel like building those relationships and nurturing those relationships with all of these four people has been very meaningful for me. So my main goal or my uh, career goal is to be a medical anthropologist, which is doing a MD, MA degree or doing an MD, PhD. So I never thought of doing um, a master's degree or a PhD degree before. Uh, with an MD degree, it sounds like a lot of studying, but it's only one year extra and you get a double doctorate degree, which is pretty awesome. And I never thought of this opportunity until uh, I got to go to Liverpool and research with these professors and doctors who are extremely dedicated in reducing health disparities uh, across the world. And I would, I would actually like to thank my shitty broad experience to this. And uh, I know the last point on my slide kind of sounds it was like, what is he going to say? Uh, I would say the importance of being an American. I think I never understood how important uh, a role I would play as an American outside the US. So I had a lot of friends studying from different countries in the UK, and it was much more easier for me to travel with the US passport than them. And many people don't take uh, advantages of that. So I would feel like when you go to study abroad, especially when you're in the, uh, when you're in the Europe region, it's so easy to travel. It's super easy to travel. As Lamar mentioned before, I literally booked flights for 10 pounds uh, to a different country. So that's like 12 to $15. So I really got to use all my time and all my breaks for that. And um, as I said before, when I was working with this professor, uh, he was in contact with a lot of senators back in the US and some officials in USAID and UNICEF uh, USA. So actually, US is a huge contributor in global human rights and global health equity works. And a lot of US-led organizations like the Gates, uh, like the Gates Foundation and the Global Fund, uh, to which the US literally donates uh, billions of dollars. So I thought that um, I, I would never know the importance of being an American and having an American degree until I study abroad. So, yep. One advice, uh, I wouldn't have been able to do any of these, uh, Any, of, I wouldn't be able to access any of these resources if I did not step out of my comfort zone and send out that one email. Ask questions, try new things and make connections is the one motto which everybody can follow. And don't be afraid, they're also just humans. So just try to reach out, be super genuine and authentic and share the true self and why do you want to work with them or why do you want to get to know them and that's going to get you to a lot of places. Thank you, Pranav. And mm -hmm. thank you to all three of our panelists again. Um, thank you to our alumni for joining us today to share your stories. Um, we would now like to open it up to question and answer. So if you do have any questions um, that you haven't yet typed into the chat box, please make sure you do that now. We do have about 20 minutes to address questions, so we'll go ahead and jump right in. I know there are a few questions that have come in already. 
Um, Susanna and Karen, my colleagues, are also with me on the line, and they'll be helping me with addressing these questions. Um, Karen and Susanna, are there uh, specific questions that have come in for our alumni? Yes, we had, uh, this is Karen, uh, we had a question for our alum about how did you keep your language skills alive and fresh? Yes, um, I, I have an answer for this. Um, <clears throat> I think there are three ways for me that I tend to keep my Spanish skills fresh. Uh, first, podcasts. There are so many amazing podcasts out there. Uh, for those of you that are studying Spanish, I found uh, Radio Ambulante on NPR, an excellent place uh, to, to continue listening in Spanish um, and, and, and following along with the stories that they're, <clears throat> that they're sharing. Um, again, I love music, um, listening to uh, Spanish language music, um, even looking at the lyrics. I used to do this in high school. If there's a word in the song that I don't understand, look it up find out what it means, and then try to practice using that in my normal everyday conversation. And that just continues to build my vocabulary. And then the last thing is networking. Um, in me starting Teens of Color Abroad and wanting to bring students to Seville, I was eventually connected to someone from Seville who's been super excited to have meetings with me entirely in Spanish. So if I could recommend three things, podcast, music, and continue to network. Um, this is next on the line. <clears throat> one of the ways in which I was able to continue my French was one, still being involved with my school's French department, um, but also um, at my job, we get a lot of guests coming from France. So if we have uh, maybe a chemist or a project manager that's visiting us, you know, for more than a week, I'll set up time uh, to chat with them. We call it like French coffee connection. So it's me and a few other colleagues will set up an hour here or there to just connect with the colleague from uh, France or if they're visiting from another hub, just so that we're all practicing our French because even in this company, different people have different um, levels of understanding of French. So just being able to, again, sit in more of a conversational style, um, also watching some videos and stuff online have been ways in which I um, continue keeping my French fresh. Thank you, Lamar and Manessa. Um, Karen and Susanna, do we have other questions for our panelists? We did. We had a question about Lamar. Someone wanted to know a little bit about how you went about starting your nonprofit, um, maybe a couple of steps that you took and resources you tapped into to bring that vision into fruition. Absolutely. Uh, it's a great question. So uh, back in 2018, so now not this past summer, but the summer before, I actually traveled back to Seville, Spain and reconnected with the school that I studied abroad with. Their name is Centro Mundo Lengua. Uh, they're a private international language learning school. Um, and so when I was back in Spain, I got to reconnect with the director of the program and share with him uh, about my study abroad experience and how nearly 10 years later it still stuck with me and how I wanted to uh, make sure that high school students from my community had the same experience and he was entirely on board. So starting Teens of Color Abroad has been full circle for me, um, uh, you know, in, in receiving the Gilman and being able to travel and then studying with Centro Mundo Lengua and now back in New York City. Um, and so that's how my partnership with Spain came about. And then when I came back to the state, I fostered a fiscal sponsorship partnership to ensure that we had 501c3 status. And then research, research, research. Google has become my best friend. Um, and so I reached out to local organizations who could support me in the process, whether that's local small business centers. Um, there's an incredible organization called Diversity Abroad. I would strongly encourage looking into their resources. But um, honestly, I've just been able to connect with the school that I studied abroad with and then uh, started doing research on how to create a nonprofit organization. Excellent, thank you. So this is Karen again. We had another question. Uh, this was specific to Manessa. Uh, the individual is saying, um, is there a way to access the co-author project that you are a part of? Yeah, I could actually send them uh, the link to the book. So if they wanna connect with me on LinkedIn after, I could definitely send that over. Excellent, good. We'll recommend that they touch base with you on LinkedIn. Great. Okay. Have, thank you. Uh, let's see, we have another question um, that for all the presenters, did you did you or 
did you not ever worry that you may not find what fits you career-wise despite your study abroad skills? So for example, that you're searching and not finding a clear area for you. If so, how did you work through that situation? Uh, I'd like to answer to start. Um, being a cosmetic chemist is not the traditional path for someone in STEM. Um, and even during my undergrad, I was discouraged a lot by professors, advisors, um, because they wanted to steer me into more of like a PhD, your technical STEM track. Um, but I think having that certainty in myself and knowing exactly where my interests are, you can always find a way to intersect your interests, right? So not only am I a scientist, I'm like, you can get me to buy anything. I like to say I can, I'm the consumer that all companies want, right? So I like science. You can get me to buy anything. I'm interested in the business. So I kind of marry all of those interests in terms of what I do. So I'll go to trade shows. I'll, you know, connect with people on LinkedIn. I think instead of worrying about if the right career or right avenue exists, out there for you I think we live in a time where you can create that for yourself it doesn't always mean like being an entrepreneur but there are so many programs there's so many companies in which you can kind of brand yourself and be able to leverage all of your interests all of your language skills to really fit a long-term career that you want for yourself I would like to add that you just have to trust in your experience and how you can use uh, the knowledge you gain from your experience to different fields um actually a lot of different fields are not that different and there are a lot of skills which are interdisciplinary and um, when you study abroad you can use those same skills to leverage in many disciplines um a lot of my advisors back here at k State also told me why do you want to focus on global health and do that research you can in, instead of that you can just shadow doctors and volunteer at a hospital and be the traditional student but I felt that uh, doing something which I'm passionate about and something which I like, uh, um, and I did that, and I got to use that uh, skill set, uh, and I got to leverage it in a variety of ways, um, especially for the fellowship I'm doing right now. Yeah, and and I'll share my experience. I think <clears throat> um, the the opportunity will present itself. After I graduated from college, I was a sixth grade math teacher for five years. So I took a complete left turn, um, but something in me wanted to go back to the Spanish language where I became a high school Spanish teacher and I was comfortable in that. And then it was the many conversations that I had with my students that they sort of gave me an idea uh, of what I wanted to do and how I could bridge my study abroad experience to um, address a clear issue in international education. Um, and so if you would have asked me right after college, you know, how, how am I using my study abroad experience? I don't think that I would have had an answer. Um, it, it just happened to work out that way. And so I would just say also trust in the process. Um, no matter where you are, those study abroad experiences are always in you. And so just continue to reflect on those. And as I said in uh, when I spoke earlier, uh, I think it's just finding a way to bridge uh, those reflections into what you're currently doing to create your own experience. Awesome. Thank you. Karen and Susanna, do we have any more questions for our alumni? This is Karen. That's all that came in currently. Um, but just to quickly ask some of the one more one more popped in but to say to all the panelists if individuals connect with you on linkedin like if they send you a message to connect on linkedin are you willing to connect with people who are part of the webinar today yes absolutely yeah, that's fine yes i would love that okay awesome expect several linkedin messages in your box then <laughs> thanks for confirming all right so another question that came in is um Someone's asking, what's the best way to network with nonprofits? So for those of you that have that experience or some recommendation, one or two recommendations maybe you have. I guess it depends on the city that you're in. Uh, I live in New York City where there are so many nonprofits. Um, there is an organization in New York called Be Social Change. Um, and they specifically hold networking events to connect nonprofits uh and and other organizations so i would say look into be social change um 
And I'm, I'm sure there are a few other organizations out there that I can't think of, but that's definitely one of them. Great. Those are the all of the questions that came in. Was there anything, Randy, you wanted to give the alumni maybe a minute or two to, for any last minute thoughts to share? Yeah, and I also wanted to just mention to anyone um, dialing in today, if you do think of questions later, you can go ahead and email those into um, our Gilman Scholars inbox, which I'll show on the screen here in just a minute, and then we'll be happy to pass those on to our panelists. Um, and Lamar and Manessa and Pranav, do you have any final thoughts uh, to leave with our alumni who are calling in today to listen? Um, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll add one thing. Um, again, as I said, right after I graduated college, I started teaching middle school math, so I took a total left turn. And then as I got into teaching high school Spanish, I started reflecting more on my study abroad experience and found that Gilman was an incredible resource. So I would say as you are continuing to think about what you're doing, um, uh, Gilman people, I hope that you're okay with me uh, putting you out there in this way, but leverage your, your Gilman connections. And, um, you know, they've been doing this for a very long time. So I would say use, use um, your, your experience as a Gilman uh, scholarship recipient. Use that um, to, to leverage and, and to connect with uh, people who work for Gilman to, to help you illuminate um, your path forward in, in whatever career that you take. Thank you, Lamar. Um, I did get a question if we can show everyone's full names again on the screen. So I have those popped up there. You want to write those down so you can look up our alumni on LinkedIn. Take advantage of that. And then we have just a couple other words um, and reminders from me. Just a couple last reminders. Um, not only take advantage of networking with um, Lamar and Manessa and Pranav today, on LinkedIn, but you can also stay connected with the Gilman program. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. This webinar is being recorded and the video will be posted on the Gilman YouTube channel. Um, so definitely stay connected with us there. And there are also um, other resources through the U.S. Department of State. You can find resources for other opportunities to go abroad, um, other international internship opportunities at studyabroad.state.gov, um, opportunities such as the Critical Language Scholarship, Fulbright, U.S. Student Program, and the Bourne Scholarships and Fellowships. And then finally, our contact information. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact us here. The most important is our website at gilmanscholarship.org. I'd like to thank everyone again for joining, and a huge thank you to our alumni panelists for joining us today. And um, stay tuned for the announcement for our next career symposium that will be happening um, in the near future. And uh, we look forward to seeing you then. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.